Hey everybody, Keith Burns with Green Cover here in another of our series on potential funding sources to help you down the regenerative path that you've started on. Uh, we have with us today uh, my friend David Doctorian. David is the state conservationist uh, for the state of Kansas uh, for NRCS, uh, a position that he started fairly recently. Uh, prior to that, David was with, uh, he was one of the soil health specialists in the state of Missouri. Uh, and in that position, I was blessed to be able to work with him on several different projects where we came in and helped with some of the different workshops and seminars that they put on. So I know that David's heart is with the farmer. Uh, he has uh, his own operation, so he's using a lot of these regenerative practices. And so uh, those are near and dear to him. But now he's uh, uh, in a position of leadership within the state of Kansas. And so I've asked him. Uh, to just talk in big general terms about some of the programs, opportunities that NRCS has to offer the farmer, the producer for helping them uh, go further down this path. So David, uh, welcome and thank you very much for taking your time. Uh, did I miss anything in your background? Did that kind of sum things up? No, that, that's that's uh, that's really good. And thank you, Keith, for, for having me. I appreciate it. I always, uh, I always, love the opportunity to talk about cover crops and regenerative agriculture uh you mentioned it I've, I've moved more into an administrative position but uh always jump at the chance to talk about uh what we can do with good stewardship you know uh, i think that's what that's what we're really talking about when we talk about covers and no-till and and any of these regenerative practices um so thanks for having me appreciate it yeah ab absolutely yeah and and you know really we're all on the same team of wanting to you know protect the the resources that we've been blessed with so so tell us a little bit and and, and again i know that these programs are going to vary widely from state to state county to county even so we're not trying to pin you down on any specifics here but in big broad general terms you know what are some of the different programs that nrcs offers and you know who might be interested and who might qualify for this yeah so um you know for for nrcs we really have uh, a couple of funding opportunities that are the probably the most accessible um and and that would be what we call equip and csp now you know with uh with us we we speak an acronym right so equip is the uh environmental quality incentive program and CSP is a conservation security program. So just uh, what we talk about EQIP and CSP, that's what we're talking about. And both of those are, you know, voluntary programs that a producer, a landowner, or an operator can sign up for. And um, they address a resource concern on their, on their operation. So part of the process is, uh, is, you know, establishing what those resource concerns might be. So there is uh, whatever it is that, that the farmer would bring to the table, the farmer or rancher, and then uh, whatever it is that NRCS might assess as well. And then they get to make some decisions about what it is that they want to address. So uh, maybe a, an easy distinction between the two programs. In EQIP, we might be a little more focused on what we're going to address, whereas with CSP, we're probably going to be uh, hoping to, to 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 qualify for CSP, number one, we're going to be at a higher level of conservation to begin with. We're going to come in the door with um, maybe a few more things done, and then we're going to be a little more focused on what it is that we're going to address through that CSP contract. So that is not to say that, that you can't do CSP before EQIP, but generally speaking, what we see producers do is they start with EQIP, they begin to work through the resource concerns on their operation, uh, and then they'll transition into a C CSP contract, which uh, the, the, the purpose for the programs are a little different. CSP really is to address a need, uh, excuse me, EQIP is to address a need. CSP has a little more of a, of a reward component to it for having already addressed a need. So a little different concept between those two, but both are viable options. Um, we also have a program called the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, RCPP, you'll hear us call it. And within RCPP resides both EQIP and CSP, depending on how the partner uh, put that proposal together. So it's a, it's a much the same, but 
some some differences. And you've already mentioned it. Everything we talk about uh, is subject to verification with your local office. So it'll be a little different from place to place, perhaps, and you'll need to drill down on the details. But in terms of uh, who is, uh, you know, who whom are these programs available to? Um, you know, they're available to any operator in the country, really. Uh, there's some there's some details, of farm and track numbers, some things that you have to go through to to uh, meet the administrative side of it, the paperwork side of it. But uh, if you have a resource need, then you you are someone that we want to work with. Yeah, well, for sure. You should at least go into your county office and and explore whether or not you'd be a good candidate or eligible. Now, would you say? And and we had a CSP contract. I should admit it's been 25 years ago, and so I know that program more of city balls and changes all the time, but it, it, would it be accurate to say that CSP has a, a lot of different options, a lot of different things that you can choose to work on that could be part of your program? It's it's a it's a big, broad program. I mean, cover crops would be part of it, but there could be many, many other conservation practices that an operator could choose. Is that correct? That That's, that's right. It, it's, it's wide ranging. It, uh, you know, we're looking at at all the land uses on the operation and we're looking at the operation as a uh, in total so it's everything that the landowner will have or the operator will have control of for the length of the contract so it's not just uh, a track and field but rather it is all the tracks and fields and associated lands and even the farmstead uh, would be part of that evaluation so it you know, it can be everything from cover crops and no-till, but it also could include pollinators. It can include energy audits on the uh, grain bins. I mean, it's it's wide ranging uh, in what is available through it. So that's a that's a great point to bring up, Keith. Yeah. And, and I've been asking this question to all of the different you know grant folks that we've been talking to and stuff. Do do these programs? Really, only pay for new practices that are going to be implemented. Or is there any credit or any payments for things that I'm already doing, but I'm going to continue to do? Right. So, so CSP takes into account what you've been doing, and there is a, a, a value associated with that. Your your current level of conservation is the way we say it. Equip, on the other hand, is simply looking at what it is that you want to do. I want to do uh, no-till and cover crops. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so it's more specific. Sometimes you'll, there, there's some misconception, um, about that. You know, when NRCS talks about no-till, they're talking about zero till. The field will see a planter, a sprayer, and a combine. That's it. Uh, I think a lot of times producers think of no-till as, um, you know, as in a rotation. We no-till our soybeans, but we, we do some tillage for corn. So, yeah. And I'm saying that to say this, if you go into an office and, and they ask you, are you currently no-tilling? And you say yes, then most likely the response will be you're not uh, eligible to do no-till since you're already doing it. Yeah. But you need to make sure that you're using both, that both you and the, the office personnel are using the same definition. Same way, yeah. Recognize our definition is zero-till. Same way with cover crops. Let's say you've been doing some uh, winter kill uh, oats cover crop and you come in you want to sign up for cover crops with the intention of maybe doing something a little more advanced mm -hmm. well if you're already doing the practice then they you might hear that you're not eligible but in fact if you're moving to a higher level of conservation a diverse overwintering type mix or something right something that's going to be more impactful but more difficult to manage uh, maybe some pitfalls associated with them then then there would still be some eligibility so there's some details like that 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 you need to understand and uh, need to be aware of so that you make sure that uh, you end up where you need to be, right? Sure. And it, and it doesn't cost you anything other than a little bit of time to go in and at least check out what the, what the options are because it, it's not going to fit everybody, just like any of these grant programs that are out there isn't going to fit everybody. But I'm guessing that with all of the programs that are out there, there's something that will fit everybody uh, there's something for everybody. It's just not the same thing for everybody. Absolutely. I mean, you and I are talking about federal cost share essentially, but there are so many products out there right now between yeah. climate smart and state cost share and uh, some of the uh, 
so, some of the commodity groups and there, there's so many opportunities. Yeah. Um, so yes, you're right. There's something for someone out there that'll, that will fit you. I would also bring up that maybe, uh, it's good to remember you, you might not even have to come into the office, right? Uh, you might make a call and, and someone would come meet you on your farm in the field. That's what we prefer. If we can make that happen. Um, we spend a lot of our, uh, uh, winners attending, uh, different conferences. We'll have uh, a booth and there'll be, uh, conservation planners there. You can stop into a booth and visit. We'll be at the state fair in Kansas. We'll, you know, there's a lot of different places that, that okay. will show up that uh, you can take yeah. advantage of that. Yeah. I want to, I want to talk just briefly before we close here about RCPP. Is, is that a program that an individual farmer would apply for, or is that something that more of an entity would apply for? And then when they get that grant, then they would make, benefits available to people within a region. Is that, is that how that works? So the latter, right? So yeah. it, it would be something uh, that an entity uh, or, or a, a, a combination of entities would go together and apply for, they would uh, provide a proposal. That proposal goes through a, uh, an evaluation process. It may or may not be accepted. Um, usually if it's not accepted, there's some collaboration over the next year to get it to maybe closer to what would be accepted if, if we can, if there's some agreements there. Um, but then once that is put in place, then it will be available to landowners and producers to take advantage of whatever it is that they're going to address. Uh, so, and usually they're targeted, right? It's about water quality. It's about bird habitat. It's about, you know, something specific that that particular partner is interested in seeing some, some uh, advancement on. Right. So, you know, you may, you know, taking Kansas as an example, you may hear of a program through a RAPS group or through a conservation district or something like that, but it certainly could be some of this RCPP money if they had applied and been awarded one of those. So, right. Right. Um, so yeah, that's not something an individual would apply for, but it's certainly something that an individual could benefit from if there's one in your area. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, David. I, and again, I know, we didn't go into a lot of detail because we just simply can't because it's such a, pro a program that varies so much from state to state and county to county. So we just want to encourage you uh, to reach out uh, to your local NRCS folks and just find out if there's any of these programs that uh, you might be eligible for and, and might be a good fit. So uh, any any last closing words, uh, David? Well, of course, thank you, Keith, for giving us the opportunity to talk about uh, equip and CSP and the work that NRCS does. We appreciate that. Um, and I, my encouragement to those that, that see this is to, you know, if you're not aware of what NRCS does, uh, what your local USDA service center offers, um, find a little time and stop in and, and uh, make an appointment, visit, and and see if there's a connection that you can make there to uh, to get some of that benefit. We we. We want to do that. That's, that's what we're in the business of doing. We we want to we want to see producers, uh, you know, in, have the impact on their land that they want to have, and we want to help and partner with them. So, appreciate the opportunity, Keith. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And and you know, for for people like David and his team, and and many many NRCS folks out there, they truly are from the government, and they are here to help. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. So thank you very much, David. Fair enough. Thank you, sir.